A very good evening to all our viewers and listeners. We greet you in that wonderful name of Jesus. We want to say thank you for joining us this evening to enjoy our midweek encouragement. We pray that you'll be wonderfully blessed as we spend some time in God's Word together. Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you that we can come aside this evening just to spend some time in your Word. We pray that you will equip us with a greater understanding on life so that as we look at situations, as opportunities come before us, that we'll be able to handle it with greater wisdom than ever before. And so, Father, we, we open our hearts and minds to receive from you now. We acknowledge your presence. And Holy Spirit, we know that you are here right now to lead us into all truth. Would you teach us? Would you counsel us and guide us right now through the Word of God? In Jesus' name, amen. Well, as you know, on a Wednesday evening, we've been running a midweek series entitled How to Develop a Disciplined Life. How to bring order back into our lives. This evening, we're dealing with part 11. And this evening, I want to come from a fresh angle. I don't want to say to you, I want to talk to you about something that you and I use almost every day in our lives in almost everything we do. In actual fact, 1,466 times this is mentioned in the Bible. And I want to speak about something that represents our commitment. It speaks of our agreements in life our responsibilities, and it represents our abilities. What am I saying this evening? I want to speak to you about disciplined hands. Think about it. Most of what you did today involved your hands. Your hands either touched it, carried it, worked with it. Every time we express ourselves, for some reason, even our hands come and be part of the conversation. So our hands are so attached to all that we do in life. With our hands, we commit to things. With our hands, we carry certain responsibilities. With our hands, we settle on agreements together. It speaks of our abilities. So this evening, I want to speak about disciplined hands. Because I see a lot of undisciplined things happening in life right now. People are not staying true to their commitments. People are not remaining faithful to their agreements. People are not carrying their responsibilities wisely. Uh, people are neglecting their abilities because they're not having disciplined hands in their lives. And I've just come to understand that disciplined hands can really lead us in the direction of receiving God's blessing. So turn with me quickly to the book of Ecclesiastes and we're going to read from chapter 9 and verse 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 10. The writer says, Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. For in the grave where you are going, there is neither working, nor planning, nor knowledge, nor wisdom. And so the writer says here, Life is short. And before you enter the grave site, and while you're above the grave site, Whatever your hand finds to do, whatever you have committed yourself to, whatever agreement that you've shaken upon, whatever responsibility that you have carried and you're still carrying, whatever ability and gifting you have, do it with all your might. I've come to understand that a disciplined life will produce excellence wherever we go. We will produce excellence in all that we do when we have disciplined hands. So again, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. Not with a portion of your might. Not with 5% of your strength and 5% of your passion and 5% of your energy and just when you feel like it. But whatever your hand finds to do, whatever is currently in your hands, what you are committed to, what you are responsible for, what you are um, commanded to produce, whatever is in your hands, do it with all your might. Do it with the right attitude. Do it with the purity of heart. Do it with passion. And so that in all that we do, God may be glorified. Whatever your hand 
finds to do. You know the proverb says in Proverbs 10 and verse 4. Let me quote that. Proverbs 10 and verse 4 says, Lazy hands make for poverty, but diligent hands, they bring wealth. It brings blessing. You know, we're living this year with that prophetic word that God will cause our cups to overflow. But the question is, how do we position our cups to attract the overflow of God's blessing in our lives? Well, one of the ways is, what are you and I doing with what is in our hands? For if our hands are diligent hands, that speaks of disciplined hands. Hands that are not just carrying it with 5% energy and 5% passion and when we feel like it and will only do it if those individuals around me will do what I expect from them, then I will step up to the plate. No. Diligent hand says, no matter what the climate is, no matter what the atmosphere is, no matter what has happened, whatever my hand finds to do, I'm still going to do it with all my might. I'm going to discipline my hands. I'm going to stay true to my commitments. I'm going to stay true to my responsibilities. I'm going to stay true to my abilities and what I agreed upon. And I'm going to let my yes be yes and my no, no. I'm going to have diligent hands, faithful, reliable hands. Because lazy hands makes for poverty. But diligent hands, disciplined hands will attract wealth and blessing. If we go on to the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 10, and let's read from verse 18, it says, If a man is lazy, the rafters sag. If his hands are idle, the house leaks. So the condition of our house will be determined by the kind of hands we have. If we have disciplined hands, we see a crack in our walls, we patch the crack, we deal with the crack. If there's a leak, we, de we deal with the leak. In actual fact, if we have disciplined hands, we will put things in place before the leak arrives because we're taking care of our house. And our house represents our life. We've got to learn to take care of what we've committed to. You committed to your marriage. You didn't just sign a legal agreement, but you made a vow to be committed to your marriage. That's what's in your hands right now, is your marriage. What's in your hands? Your relationship with your kids. What's in your hands is what you're doing at work right now. Your place of employment is what's in your hands. What has been given to you? What are you gifted in? What are you passionate about? It's in your hands. What are you doing with it? Are you doing it with all of your might or just a portion of your might? Because it calls for a disciplined hand to do it with all your might. And it calls for discipline, not to become lazy, not to become idle, but to remain diligent. It calls for discipline. So let's make sure we take care of our house. It calls for disciplined hands. If we go to Ephesians chapter 4 quickly, Ephesians 4, and let's read verse 28. The writer says in verse 28, He who has been stealing must steal no longer. In other words, those who've been using their hands incorrectly, committing to an injustice, agreeing to do something that's contrary to God's word, becoming irresponsible and not reliable, stealing with their hands. It says here, they must now stop and they must work, doing something useful with his own hands, that he may have something to share with those in need. So the writer says here, make sure that your hands are so disciplined that your hands are not being used for that which is useless and ineffective, but discipline your life and use your hands for what is useful, what is uplifting, what is constructive, what is productive. If we move on quickly to 1 Thessalonians, I want to read something here to you because there are times when distractions creep into our lives and these distractions can cause us to develop lazy hands, idle hands. Hands have become useless and no longer effective. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 11. Follow with me in verse 11. The writer says, Make it your ambition to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business, and to work with your hands, just as we told you, so that your daily life may win the respect of outsiders 
and so that you will not be dependent on anybody. Today, a lot of people are depending on the hands of others and are not willing to lift their own hands. They want a hand out, not a hand up. They're not willing to attach their hands to it. They would rather allow someone else to be the hands in the situation. And the writer says, yet, don't become like that. Make it your ambition to be working with your hands. And it says here, to mind your own business. So here's the distraction. When we're not focusing on what's in our hands, but we start focusing on someone else's marriage, on someone else's job, on someone else's responsibility, on someone else's commitment, we will start neglecting what's in our hands. We will no longer remain faithful and reliable to our own abilities, to our own responsibilities, to our own commitments. And before we know it, we start sticking our nose in other people's business. And now we're no longer busy, but we become busy bodies. We know about everybody else's life and what's in their hands, when suddenly now we're not focused on what's in our hands. And you know what the Bible says about that? That speaks of idle hands. When we're not focused on what's in our hands and we're focused on what's in someone else's hands, we develop idle hands. No longer just lazy hands or useless hands, but we now develop idle hands. It goes on to two Thess 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 14. The writer says, warn those who are idle. There's a warning that goes out to idle hands. Because idle hands can end up suffering tremendous loss. If we go to 2 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 11. Listen to what it says in 2 Thessalonians 3 verse 11. We hear that some of you are idle. You've developed idle hands. Undisciplined hands. They are not busy. They are busy bodies. Such people we command and urge in the Lord Jesus Christ to settle down and earn the bread they eat. What does the writer say? Discipline your hands. Settle down. Like it said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11. Make it your ambition to lead a quiet life. Work with your own hands. Avoid trying to be part of everybody else's business. You see, idle hands is linked to disruptive hands because it says here, we hear that some of you are idle and disruptive. And one thing that is linked to idle hands, wherever you see idle hands, you're going to find disruptive hands because now people are just disrupting situations. They are joining themselves to other people's conversations, other people's business, and now they're starting to carry in their hands what they shouldn't be carrying in their hands and neglecting what they should be carrying. You know, Psalm 24. If you quickly go to Psalm 24 and verse 3. Psalm 24 verse 3 says, Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may go up and spend time with God right now and connect with Him? The writer goes on and says, He who has clean hands and a pure heart. He who has disciplined his hands. He who has been true to his commitments. He who has carried his responsibility with wisdom and faithfulness. He who has not neglected his gifts and his abilities. He who said he would do it and he allowed his yes to remain a yes. He was true to his agreement. He has kept his hands clean. He has walked with integrity. He has walked with honesty. He has kept true to his word. He who has those hands clean hands, and a pure heart may ascend the hill and encounter God in a wonderful way. Natural fact, 1 Timothy 2 verse 8, it says, the writer says, Paul says to Timothy, I would love men everywhere, where when they're praying to lift up holy hands without anger or disputing. In other words, whatever your hand is finding to do, do it all your might, but while you're doing it, don't do it with anger. Don't do it with disputing because then you're going to present before God unholy hands. Because then when we do things at, in our marriage, when we do things at home, when we do things at work, we go about it with a bad attitude. Now we're no longer doing it with all our might because we're angry. We're not doing it with all our, our, our best wishes in it because the reality is we're angry with the people before us. And so if we're going to do things, we mustn't do it with anger 
and with disputing and arguing and quarreling and complaining. In actual fact, I know the Bible also says, whatever you do, do it without complaining. And so the reality is, whatever's in your hands, make sure that you do it with clean hands. Be true to your word, so that you may encounter the blessing of God in your life. Even in your prayer life, before you go and pray, make sure, is your marriage in place as it should be? The way you're conducting yourself with your husband, your wife, your kids, your parents, your employer. Before you just enter into a prayer session with God, God even says, make sure that your hands have been disciplined. And if your hands have not been disciplined, make sure that you repent of your undisciplined hands so that you can come before me with clean hands, holy hands, pure hands, so that your prayers may be effective. You know, undisciplined hands can even affect our prayer life and the results to our prayer life. And so this evening, last scripture I want to share with you comes out of the Gospel of Luke chapter 9 and verse 62. Jesus says, No one who puts his hands to the plow and then looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. God wants reliable hands, faithful hands, focused hands. Not just touching the plow, not just holding the plow, but focused with what is in your hands. And, the, and what Jesus is saying here is that you can hold on to your commitment. You can be in your marriage. You can be in your workplace. You can have your hands attached to the plow. But you can still be so misfocused, looking back, getting distracted. And before you know it, your hands become unreliable. They become idle. They become useless. They become lazy. They become dirty. They become corrupted. And before you know it, it will affect the way you are plowing. Even though you're still in your marriage, it starts to affect your marriage in a negative way. Even though you still end up going to work, it will affect your workplace in a negative way. It will affect your relationships in a negative way. And so I want to close this evening by saying this to you. What is our challenge How, that you and I have to overcome? What causes us not to do what's in our hands with all our might? What causes us to suddenly become lazy hands? Idle hands, useless hands, dirty hands, unholy hands, not clean hands. It's because sometimes out of the fear of failure, we don't manage what's in our hands correctly. The fear of shame, the fear of embarrassment, the fear of disappointment, the fear of loss. Before you know it, we're not managing what's in our hands correctly. Or it's the feeling of rejection. I've been rejected before. I'm afraid I'll be rejected again. Or the feeling of I'm unqualified. I shouldn't be managing this. I shouldn't be carrying this. I shouldn't be touching this. Or the feeling of I feel so guilty because I haven't done what I should be doing. How I don't deserve to even have a second chance. I shouldn't even try again. Or the inferiority creeps in or the insecurity creeps in. And before we know it, we start making excuses. We start making excuses to justify while we're not doing what we should be doing with what is in our hands. And before you know it, we start feeding our undisciplined hands by playing the blame game. We point our fingers at that person. We blame that situation. We, play, we blame COVID. We, we blame the economy. We, break, we blame the government. And before we know it, we start procrastinating, we're delaying, we're waiting off until the ideal scenario takes place. Before we will commit to it, before we will agree with it, whatever is in your hands, we should be doing it with all our might. So as I close, here are some steps to help you and I to keep our hands clean, holy, useful, effective, busy, at work, and do it with all our might. Here is some of the keys. One. Maintain your enthusiasm and your integrity. Maintain it. Feed it. Because when you lose your passion and your enthusiasm, you will no longer want to do it with all your might. When you're not walking in integrity, you're no longer going to be doing it with a good attitude and your credibility will be lost and you will no longer be interested in doing it. Number two, remain diligent and responsible. Discipline your thought life. Discipline your attitude. Wake up and count what is in your hands a blessing. Because not many people have what you and I sometimes have in our hands. Count what is in your hand a blessing. 
When you see it as a curse, you will not want to do it with all your might. Take your business opportunity. Take your marriage. Take your opportunities and your friendships and situations. Count it a blessing and it will flourish. And lastly, whatever is in your hands, build with it with kingdom values and principles. That all your commitments, all our agreements, all our responsibilities and abilities, let them be governed and held together by biblical and kingdom values and principles. Otherwise, we're going to end up committing to the wrong thing, agreeing to the wrong thing, carrying the wrong responsibilities, neglecting our abilities, competing to be someone that we're not meant to be, and before we know it, we end up with unholy hands, dirty hands, useless hands, idle hands, lazy hands. And what God wants is diligent hands. Hands and whatever they find to do, they do it with all their might. I want to encourage you this evening. Discipline your hands and you will reap the blessing of God in your life. God bless you. Thank you for connecting with us this evening.